is the Lord, brothers and sisters. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming tonight to the Bible study. I'm going to start in a second. Don't know whether they're here or not, but happy birthday to Albert Morris, Stephen Dobbin, Sandra Hamilton, and Hazel Craig May. So happy, bir happy birthday to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hope you've had a great day today in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Floods of revival, Lord, let them fall. Streams of salvation reaching to all. Pour out thy spirit, great is our need. Sweet for our beings, now as we Spirit be In thy presence, humbly we bow. Set all our hearts ablaze with thy love. Teach us the secret of life from above. Honor me, longing to know. All the blessed fullness love can be stored. Ready and willing, eager to give. Thank obedience, greatly to give. Spirit divine, oh, quicken us now. What's in thy presence? Humbly we bow, set all our hearts ablaze with thy love, teach us the secret of love. Hearts with the vision like unto thee. Souls that labor, dive and give in. Lies with the passion, victory to win. Spirit divine, oh, quicken us now. What's in thy presence? Humbly we bow, set all our hearts ablaze with thy love. Teach us the secret of life from above. All for the deluge, Holy Ghost heart, Lord, we are waiting. Open the windows of heaven, we pray. All on the altar, gladly pray. Spirit divine, oh, quicken us now. Whilst in thy presence, humbly we bow. Set all our hearts. People. We raise up the people, holy and free, hearts with the vision like unto thee, souls and robber, die and give in, lives with the passion, victory to win. Oh, Spirit divine. Whilst in thy presence, humbly we bow, set all our hearts ablaze with thy love, teach us the secret of life from 
Let's give the Lord the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you say amen tonight? Praise the Lord. It's one of those days. I think it's going to be thunderstorms later. Amen. So we'll just enjoy where we can here. That's it, man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus, who has washed the white. Thank you, Jesus, who has saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Isn't that a beautiful song? I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The bridge was far too wide. From the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. And there at the cross, the dead that I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul.
Thank you, God, you're saved in them. Washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah, Lord. I praise your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Bless it be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of Christ. We're here tonight because of the blood. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, we have been rescued from a lost eternity. Thank you. Tonight, people are celebrating their birthdays. We're celebrating our spiritual birthdays tonight, telling the Lord of all that he's done for us. Praise his lovely name. I have a list of names here. There's too many to mention. If you have an unspoken request, just lift your hand in the name of the Lord. Lord. Father, thank you for the weekend past. Thank you for the response to your word on Lord's Day, morning and evening. Thank you for Monday night's call to prayer, Lord, and those who responded again, inspired. Now tonight, Lord, we come to your throne of grace once more. We're here to be taught, Lord. We're here to learn. We, we're here to know what it means to live the Christian life. Tonight, Lord, we're asking you for all the list of names and not list or the prayer list, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, from we Tanya right through to the last, yeah. Lord, will you be with every one of them tonight? Will you touch every one of them? Will you comfort those that are grieving? Heal those that are sick. Lift those that are dying. Lord, tonight we pray for Pastor John, will you anoint them by the power of the Holy Spirit? And Lord, will you feed the flock tonight? Feed your people tonight in the car park and also those who will watch online as well. Lord, give them their portion of the blessing. Lord, now will you shut us in with yourself and remember our country. Remember Stormont. Remember Westminster. Remember the churches, Lord. Just touch each and every one. Lord, we ask it all in the precious name of the Lord Jesus who washed us white and saved our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, everyone. It is good to see you this evening. Um, just want to read a verse, this verse from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse number 11. But the Lord really, we're trusting he'll bless you for your faithfulness to him. Listen again to what this verse tells us God is like. Here's what it says. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up. And just note that, that's the Lord's aim for you. Wants to take you up, wants to take you higher. Taking them up, carrying them on its wings. That's what God is like according to the Bible. You know, last week we began looking at something that we're calling like eagles, like eagles. And we were pointing out how the Lord draws the parallel between his people and the great eagle in the sky. Of all the birds that God chooses to describe and illustrate his plan, and his will for his people's lives. He chose the great eagle, brothers and sisters. Please just remind yourself of that again. God chose <laughs> the king of the sky, the great eagle for the parallel between his people and what he wants his people to be. Now last week we were learning that it wasn't chickens that God paralleled his people with and I know a lot of you are really glad that you're not a chicken tonight Amen. but anyhow chickens are earth bound birds mm -hmm. they never get off the ground they have no intentions of getting off the ground you notice that with chickens they have no desire to fly anywhere they just want to stay earth bound they want to stay on the floor also 
They're crowd followers. They just go with the flow. They side with the majority. They all run after themselves all over the farmyard. They squabble and they fight so easily. Their heads are down all the time. Have you seen that? With chickens, they're bickering and packing at one another and their heads are down. It wasn't the chicken, brothers and sisters, that God used to illustrate what he wanted his children to be like. It was the eagle, yes, the king of the sky. Yes. And for good reason that we'll find out a little bit more about this evening. But we saw last time that eagles are born with their mouth wide open. And that's because they're really hungry. That's because they're always desirous of food. They want food and they want it all the time. And you know, we ought to be like that in the spiritual sense. We ought to maintain that hunger for God and the things of God. The Lord Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. But also, the eagle has its nest ruffled because eagles were born to fly. Deuteronomy that we have read draws a strong metaphor of the relationship between God and his people. And here's what it says in verse 11 of chapter 32. As an eagle stirs up its nest. That's what God does with his people. He stirs their nest. He stirs things up sometimes. He just stirs up our comfort zones as an eagle stirs up its nest. That's what God does. That's what God is like. Maybe he's done that with you recently. We just want to remind you tonight he's doing it for a reason. He's doing it for a purpose. There's so much more in the Christian life that the Lord has for you. There's so much more he wants you to experience. Listen, here's the good news. You're not done yet. You are not done yet. And God isn't done with you yet. There's more he wants you to see. And there's more he wants you to experience. He wants to fl you to fly with him, soar with him. But for that to happen, he has to stir up your comfort zone so often. But we need to know this as well. The eagle is a bird of great character. Let me just say that to you. The eagle is a bird of great character. It's a superior bird. It's a bird of quality. It's not a vulture. It's not a crow. It's not even common. It's a superior bird. It's a bird of quality. And its quality is literally marked by its character. It's not a scavenger. It's full of grace and dignity. But most of all, great, great character. Do you know that the eagle's character begins young? with its process of learning how to fly. The process of the young eaglet learning how to fly is incredibly complex and difficult. It's anything but easy. It's wrought with danger. It's strewn with great risk. But it's a process that all eagles must go through to enable the young eaglet to fly the mother eagle hovers near the nest and begins flapping her wings furiously. As the little eaglets watch her doing this, they begin imitating the mother and flap their own wings at the same time. The mother spreads her wings out and gives forth a certain screech. Somehow, the young eaglet knows it's a command for it to step out on the mother's wings. As the mother begins to ascend, the little eaglet is holding on for grim life, for all that it has. Then right in the middle of the earth, hundreds of feet from the ground, 
It's time for the eaglet to fly by itself. She shakes him off furiously. He flaps his wings. He turns somersaults. He does everything to stale off, but slowly he starts to lose altitude. When the mother eagle sees her little one get dangerously close to the ground, she swiftly swoops down, snares him up, and carries him upward to a great height, and then starts the process all over again. Each day, she repeats this, until finally the little eagle's wings have become strong enough, and he's able to stay aloft. And brothers and sisters tonight, Christian tonight, God wants to teach us how to rise with him. Please get that. Please understand that. He wants to teach us how to rise with him. Rise from the things of this world. He wants to take you above the things of this world. He wants you to rise with him above the ways of this world even. He wants to develop the right sort of character in you. He wants you to be a person of quality. And that character and that quality will distinguish you from others even in this world. But for that character to be brought about, it comes through challenging times. It comes, brothers and sisters, through testing experiences. You know that. You know that in your Christian life. That it's anything but easy. You know that. Someone said to me one time, oh, you're a Christian. That must mean you're weak because Christianity is just a crutch for weak people in this world. And I couldn't help myself. I said to them, are you joking me? Are you kidding me? You saying Christianity is easy? I want to tell you something. It's killing me. I feel it all the time. It's the hardest life of all. But God does something with his people. God is doing something with his people. Developing them. Honing them into someone of quality. Someone not like others in this world. Because the Christian is different. God says he's not like any other bird, not a crow, not a vulture, not a scavenger, and certainly not a chicken. God says, no, I've called you to be an eagle. And the eagle's life is marked with character. Just listen to Romans 5 and verse number 3. Paul says this, and he knew all about it. And not only that, he says, but we also glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character, he says. Perseverance, your troubles, your trials, your testings, they're producing something in you. It culminates in character. And Paul says, then character brings forth hope. You see, you're an eagle in heaven's eyes. And eagles are birds of immense Character. I love what one man said about character. He said, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and travail can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Let me read that to you again. Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. But only through experience of trial and travail can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. In our Christian lives, things are not easy. They're not always going to go the way we want them. There are letdowns, there's hurts, and there's disappointments. But as we keep going, and that's what happens to the young eagle, he just keeps going, just keeps going. Every day, he does it again until eventually he gets there. And I'll tell you something, there's something in that for us because we're not purpose or we're not perfect, but you know, God has put something within us that we can keep going. Come on, will you say a good amen? I was thinking about Nehemiah the other day. 
And I was thinking about the man of God because there's much to beset the servant of the Lord. And people came to Nehemiah. Sambalat was a man called Sambalat and Tobiah. And Nehemiah was doing a great work, building a, a work up for God. And these people wanted to distract him. But he sent a message to them and said, I'm doing a great work and I'm not coming down. Amen. And he was so clear about it. And you know what God found in Nehemiah? I don't know if he was highly skilled. Maybe he had some potential, the way we all do. But more than anything else, God found in Nehemiah a person who was passionate about just keeping going. Just hanging in there and just doing the right thing. And that's what marks the eagle. And that's where their character begins. The eagle is a bird of quality. Incredible character. There's another parallel. And I hope you get this one. We need to get this one. And it's the eagle's supernatural strength. The eagle's supernatural strength strength. Now brothers and sisters I'm using the word supernatural deliberately because there's no other word that we can use to, ju to really do this justice. The eagle has supernatural strength. Incredible strength. And there's no other way of describing it. It's supernatural. The eagle can lift well over its own body weight. One eagle was reported to have carried a lamb and flown with it. Now that's something. That's incredible. That's impressive. Awesome even. And you know something? It has incredible strength. Supernatural strength. But brothers and sisters tonight, there's a real need at the minute for the people of God to be strong. More than ever before maybe. But there's a real need at the minute for you to be strong, Christian. There's an incredible need for us today to be strong in the Lord. Listen to what Ephesians 6 and verse 10 says. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And of course, that's taken from the great chapter that really illustrates and highlights the need to put on the whole armor of God. But Paul ends by saying there's a need for us to be strong. You can put this armor on but you're still going to have to be strong. You can trust in these things but you're going to have to have that strength. Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Christians need to be people of strength especially at the minute. Yes. Because listen, it's not going to get any better for us. It might get worse. There's more pressure coming on the church. There's more pressure coming to the people of God in society and from the secular world. You're going to be targeted. You're going to be singled out if you stand up for Jesus. You know, we can sing that song and that great hymn. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. We can wave our tambourines if you have one and, and do all that you want to do. But you see, for you to stand up for Jesus, you better be strong. If you're going to stand up for Jesus, you're going to need to be strong. Mentally strong. Listen, mentally strong even. Emotionally strong. But more than anything, spiritually strong. Spiritually strong. And that sort of supernatural strength only comes from one thing. You know what it is tonight? Staying close to God every day. Yes, Lord. Staying close to God every day. It's as simple as that. I believe that. I woke up this morning frightened. I'm being honest with you now. I'm letting you, letting you into this. I woke up this morning frightened. Say, what were you frightened about? Were you worried about that? Were you worried about the other thing? You know what I was worried about this morning waking up? Getting away from the Lord. I was frightened to death of getting away from the Lord today. Of spending my day and just keeping Him at a distance. And I'm saying that personally. Because I need to just be close to Him. And you're the same. That sort of strength only comes from us allowing ourselves to stay close to God every day. Listen to what we're told in Isaiah 40 again. He gives power to the weak. Yes. And to those who have no might, 
He increases their strength. Because even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Listen. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Listen to it. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And brothers and sisters, that's what the Lord wants for its for us all. The eagle is a bird of supernatural strength. Incredible strength. And God wants us to be like that. And listen, here's the truth tonight. Get excited by this. God has that sort of strength for you. He's got it for you every day. You know, we said a minute ago, it's been recorded. I've seen pictures of it. I've got one here. You'll not be able to see it, but I'll show Pastor George again. There's the eagle carrying a lamb. Carrying a lamb. Read about it recently. Carrying a lamb. Eagle strength allows it to carry lambs. Can I ask you, Christian, are you able to carry someone for a while? Yes. Will you think about that right now? Are you able to carry someone for a while? Maybe someone who's hurt. Someone who's messed up. Someone who's suffering. Disillusioned. Maybe someone who's just recently come to the Lord. Do you have the strength to carry them for a while? You know, Jack and I were talking about someone we know last night. And they've done well in God. They're pillars in their local church. But we remember them coming for the first time and they were so weak. They were dependent on alcohol all most of their lives for decades. And they were dependent on alcohol. But they came to Jesus as they were with that hang up and habit and addiction and everything. But there was a man who brought him every week. There was a man who looked after him. And that man's in glory now with the Lord. But that's the memory we have of him. He carried that weaker brother until he got strong enough himself. Mm. Can you carry someone for a while? Eagle strength allows it to carry lambs. Jesus said to Peter, feed my lambs. The Lord has lambs. And there's times when the mature Christian needs to be strong enough to carry them for a while. Those who are stronger can carry those who are weak. And maybe there's things here to think about tonight. Maybe there's things here that, that maybe the longer we go on in the Lord, the stronger we should become in Him. And maybe that strength produces so much in us that will not only affect us, but affect others too. This is the eagle. This is the parallel that God sets for His people. Tremendous quality, character. It's developed over hardship. It's developed over stress and danger and fear, but still keeps going. That brings that character about, but also supernatural strength. Can I leave you with one more thing of two minutes? Not only take two minutes. It's the eagle's sublime vision. Their sublime vision. You, you've heard the common term, eagle-eyed. That's for good reason. Do you know that an eagle can spot a rabbit two miles away? I was reading an article called Eagle Eyes, written by an author called Natalie Bolchover. And she anticipates in that article what it would be like if humans had eyes like an eagle. And the first thing she does is this, points out that the eagle's eyes are not at the front like ours are, they're at the side. The eagle's eyes aren't like ours, they're at the side. But that allows it to have a panoramic view. And in this article, the author goes on to say, if you swapped your eyes for an eagle's eyes, you could see an ant crawling on the ground from the top of a 10-story building. You could make out the expressions on basketball players faces 
from the worst seats of the arena. Eagles possess incredible vision. Eagles flying at an altitude of a thousand feet over open countryside can spot prey over an area of three square miles in a fixed position. Sublime vision, incredible vision. And God says, I want my people to be people of vision. Let me leave you with this. Let me leave you with this thought and this truth. Do you know that the eagle is the only bird that can focus on the sun and fly directly to it? The eagle is the only bird that can focus on the sun. It can look right into the sun and fly directly towards it. The eagle fixes its eyes on the sun when it's flying and it flies directly towards it. And brothers and sisters, are there not lessons for here, for us here tonight as well as Christians that we need to keep our eyes on the Son of God? And you know what? We should run after him with all of our hearts. Other birds fly here, there and everywhere. They're distracted so often, but the eagle is the only bird that can look directly to the sun and fly towards it. We need vision today. We need, brothers and sisters, first of all, a greater vision of the Lord. And you know what? That's what Bible study is all about. That's the potential tonight. We can get in Bible study a greater vision of the Lord. Lord, help us to do that. We need a greater vision of the Lord. We need a greater vision of the things that matter to the Lord. And we also need a greater vision for the laws because that's what fills his heart so much. We need that sort of vision. Are we like the eagle today, possessing that sort of character quality? Brothers and sisters, can we encourage you tonight? Keep going this week. Just keep going. You don't know what the Lord's going to do. You might take off this week and reach heights you never dreamt of. Supernatural strength. Sublime vision. May the Lord help us in this. And may the Lord bless you tonight. We're going to look at that a little bit more next week. We're not going to go on for weeks, but... A little bit more next week. And I want to highlight to you the eagle's loyalty and faithfulness because it mates for life. And it always returns to the same nest. It's a tremendously loyal bird. The eagle's enemies, but more importantly, how he deals with them. It's incredible. Will you hear this? How he gets over his enemies. How it can fly in the midst of the storm. Storms don't stop eagles. Eagles use the storm for momentum. There's something in that too. And then what's called the molting process. Because all eagles will come to a place when they don't know what's happening to them. They don't know what's going on. Their strength goes. Their feathers fall off. Their heads go down. They're not used to it. They don't know what's happening. But something's happening. And there's a parallel there for us as well but the lord bless you today thank you for listening can we just pray a blessing before we hand it back to pastor george lord we just come to you as your people so unworthy of such mercy but you love us you called us and lord we want to live it out We want to live it out in this world where you placed us. But Lord, we want to rise higher than it. We want you to take us higher than its ways. And Lord, we want to soar with you. Bless your people to me. Lord, if they're still in that process, and we all are to a certain extent, but encourage them tonight, inspire them tonight to hang in there because you're with them. Bless your word to our hearts and glorify your great name. Amen. Esther, thank you for that study, God. Praise the Lord. Amen.
want to thank you for also giving that wee bit extra for the building work. We've got the, the new boilers in, it has to be fitted and also other things. We've a leak, a leak in the roof that we need to put a new part of reef on. So if you'd like to give anything towards it, we appreciate the folks have already given and we want to thank you for that. If you'd like to give a wee bit extra, we're not having a gift day. These are not the days for a gift day. We're just asking you to help if you can. In the name of the Lord. May that wait yeah. upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as he Shall run and not be weary. They shall. 
shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. Close your eyes and lift your hand one more time. watching online. Just praise the Lord for a moment. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you, Lord. I worship Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, lift your people up the yes. on eagles' wings. Yes. Lift them up, Lord. Let them soar like eagles. Yes. Let them learn how to fly. Yes. Oh, God, we pray, Lord, make us strong in our walk with you. And help us to keep our eyes open with vision for those who need our help. Father, bless your people tonight. Bless your word to our hearts, Lord. And Lord, as we leave this car park, this drive, and for those watching online, Lord, give them their portion. But as we leave tonight, Lord, may we remember that message. And may we rise yeah. to our destiny in God like eagles. Will you bless the rest of the week, Father? And will you bless the coming weekend, Lord? We're nearing our anniversary, Lord, our 12th anniversary. Oh, Lord, will you help us, Lord, to celebrate together as it comes. But Lord, will you bring us back in Lord's Day around your table, around, Lord, your emblems, Lord, of what you've done for us. And Lord, in the meantime, will you bless your people. Give us a brilliant week and a Christ-centered Lord's Day. Lord, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, Amen brothers and sisters.